Today in math class, we started talking about math mountains and how they can help us represent addition and subtraction equations. The picture on your screen is that of a math mountain. You've probably seen this image in your child's kindergarten or first grade classroom. At the top of our math mountain, we have our total. And the two numbers at the bottom we refer to as our add-ins. Now with these numbers, we can start to make addition and subtraction equations. For example, for this math mountain, we could do 4 plus 6 equals 10. But we can also flip-flop that into 6 plus 4 equals 10. Or we can turn this into a subtraction equation. Now the most important thing that we stress to the students is that when we do a subtraction equation, the biggest number must come first. The total is always the first number. In this case, we could do 10 minus 4 equals 6, or 10 minus 6 equals 4. Now, when we make this fact family, sometimes the students get the most confused on the subtraction because it's sort of an abstract way of thinking. On tonight's homework, there are a couple of different ways that these problems are to be solved. The first way looks similar to this, where we have the two add-ins, but the total number is missing. Today we practiced that we add up these two add-ins to find the total. For example, in this problem it would be 2 plus 3, and we would use an addition strategy to get the answer of 5. Now after we have that answer, underneath they would like us to write two different equations. Now there are four to choose from, just like when we saw the last example with the fact family. We could do 2 plus 3 equals 5. We could also flip-flop that into 3 plus 2 equals 5. Or we could make it a subtraction problem. 5 minus 3 equals 2 or 5 minus 2 equals 3. Today I was asking students to do one addition equation and one subtraction equation simply because the subtraction is a little bit trickier than the addition and most of them need more help with that. Another type of problem gives the students the total in one addend but the other addend is missing. In this case, students can count down to subtract, or they could start at 6 and count up to 9 to see how many this would be. This problem would have the answer of 3, but once again we want to make two different equations, so I can do 2 addition. Or 2 subtraction, or one of each. Another type of problem that we worked on today was when they gave us an equation and we had to make a math mountain that matched. This equation, 4 plus 2 equals blank, would be put on a math mountain like this. 4 and 2 are being added together to find the total, so those two numbers would be our add-ins. And then we'd simply have to add them up to find our total of 6. At the bottom, then, we can complete the equation and write another equation that would go with it. An equation that looks like this is a little bit trickier for students because it is not an addition and it does not clearly point out which are the add-ins and what is the total. When we have a subtraction problem, just like we talked about before, the first number is always the biggest, and we pull it from the top of the math mountain. So on our math mountain, since it is subtraction, the 12 will need to be the total, since it is the biggest number, and it's at the beginning of the subtraction problem. Then the 4 is one of our add-ins, and the other add-in would go down here, and we would have to solve for that. Thank you all for watching the video as a refresher on our math mountains. Please let me know if you have any questions regarding math mountains or any of the other strategies or concepts that were covered today in our math class. Thank you very much.